Let him run. <laughs> you dub. What I love about the U dub is the beautiful campus and the fresh air. Like, I've lived in Washington my whole life, so growing up, like this was always a school that you know I got to walk around campus as a little kid, and it always really amazed me. So she like seeing all these all these grand buildings. I feel very honored to be a Husky. Like I definitely feel like I'm representing them on the field. I like the campus so much. It's an amazing campus. I love it here, honestly. I come from a really small town, so uh, being able to be on the campus and just experience the city life, it's really awesome. I always dreamed about going to school just because like, my parents came here and they kind of raised me like a husky, so, so it's kind of a dream come true to come here. In your short time here, you may have heard someone talking about a dean or making the dean's list. So what is a dean? The University of Washington is comprised of 16 schools and colleges. The oldest and largest of these, the College of Arts and Sciences, was founded in 1861. You'll learn more about other schools and colleges later, but each specializes in a certain area or areas of study, such as education, engineering, law, medicine, and each is led by a dean who oversees the educational, budgetary, and administrative affairs of their units. Our deans would like to welcome you to the university and give you a brief glimpse into the world of discovery you are now entering. So without further ado, here are the deans of the University of Washington. Hello, and welcome to the University of Washington. My name is Tamara Lawson, and I'm the Tony Rimby Dean at our School of Law. I stand outside our beautiful William H. Gates Hall near the Burke Museum on Memorial Way on our Seattle campus. The law school plays a vital role in society, ensuring that justice and fairness prevail. Our students, faculty, staff, and alumni are committed to making an impact locally and globally. If you have a passion for these same values, please join us at the law school. Hello, new Huskies. Welcome to the University of Washington. I'm Sean Sullivan, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. And we are located here in the Health Sciences Complex across the street from main campus. Our faculty train professional degree and graduate students to become leaders and innovators in the fields of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences. We also offer undergraduate courses on medications and health and the science of drugs, as well as undergraduate research opportunities. So make sure you ask your advisors about these courses. The Rubenstein Pharmacy at Hull Health is staffed by UW School of Pharmacy faculty and students who will provide you services and to the broader University of Washington community. Students, faculty, and alumni from the school are actively engaged in providing access to vital primary care and disease prevention strategies. Our faculty and student researchers are developing therapies, improving care and medication, studying new ways to make drug treatments more accessible, affordable, and effective. In fact, four of our alumni were integral in the development of the first approved treatment for COVID-19, remdesivir. Given the present situation, our faculty, students, and researchers are working to assist with, minimize, and understand the impact of COVID-19 on our communities. I hope you'll find interest in the things that we do. And if you do, please contact our students and our faculty. They'd be happy to talk with you. And on behalf of my colleagues, I wish you a successful first year. Go dogs! Hello. I'm Azita Imami, Executive Dean of the University of Washington School of Nursing. We are proud to be one of the leading schools of nursing in the country. Our graduates are making a difference in the lives of millions of people every day. Our state and our nation need more nurses in all capacities, and the University of Washington School of Nursing is expanding its capacity to help meet that need. Our programs prepare nurses at all educational levels. 
our Bachelor of Science in Nursing and Accelerated Programs are the top sources of new nurses for hospitals, clinics, and public and community health services. Our Doctor of Nursing Practice Program prepare nurse leaders and independent nurse practitioners for primary care, hospitals, and beyond. And our PhD program prepares those who will be researchers and educators to generate knowledge that improve people's health and well-being. All our programs are the leading programs of their types across the nation. Our vision is to make an impact on the health of people both locally and globally and to promote health equity and justice. Our faculty is focused on student success and we have an unwavering commitment to anti-racism, diversity, equity and inclusion. It's an exciting time to be a nurse. And we are so proud to be educating the next generation of nurse leaders who will create a future of uh, healthcare services for all people, both locally and globally. Welcome to the University of Washington. Hello, and a warm welcome to all of you. I'm Eddie O'Hara, Dean of the UW School of Social Work. Our school is behind me on 15th Avenue Northeast here on the west side of campus. We're home to 640 undergraduate and graduate students, all of them dedicated to social justice and to lifting up communities in need in our state. We're consistently ranked among the top three schools of social work in the country because we're an incubator for transformative solutions that change lives. Our students learn from faculty who are top experts in indigenous health, community-based participatory research, community mental health, youth development, suicide and substance abuse prevention, anti-poverty policy, and dozens of other important issues. And we send our students out to work with our partner organizations in the community to practice what they're learning in the classroom. During this COVID-19 crisis, they've been instrumental in developing inventive ways to deliver remote social services to those most affected by the pandemic. Our student body is 47% people of color and many are first generation college students. Most stay in Washington after graduation to work in nonprofits, healthcare settings, schools, government agencies, and leadership roles across many sectors. We're a passionate community committed to anti racist work and systemic social change. We hope you'll join us in working towards a healthier and more just society.
So my advice to incoming freshmen is to seek for help. Suck in that pride, look for help. You will need it. There's a lot of resources at the school. Do not be afraid to raise your hand and volunteer for something. Join a club, go Greek, you know, join your residence halls council, but make sure you get involved. Hello, I'm Dr. Andre Ritter, Dean of the UW School of Dentistry. Welcome to the University of Washington. I am myself new to the university, given that I started my deanship only a few days ago, and I share your excitement about the journey that we're beginning. The next few years will be one of the most exciting times of your life, filled with growth and discovery. For me, the opportunity to lead one of the world's best dental schools was impossible to pass up. Let me tell you a little about the School of Dentistry. Last year was our 75th anniversary. Over those decades, we have built a global reputation for excellence in dental education, research, clinical care, and service. We play a critical role in improving the oral health of those who live in Washington and beyond. We are educating the next generation of oral health care providers, dentists, and dental hygienists. We are advancing research and innovations that directly impact health and well being. We are improving access to care in rural Washington through our regional initiatives and dental education program. And we provide care to thousands of patients in our many general dental and specialized clinics. 
If you ever consider oral health care as a professional career, as a dentist or a dental hygienist, I hope to welcome you in person to our school in four years. Welcome to UW and enjoy the journey. Hi, I'm Joy Williamson Lott. I'm Dean of the Graduate School, and I'm standing in front of Susalo Library, an iconic building on the Seattle campus, one of many libraries that you'll find on all three of our campuses. The Graduate School serves 14,000 graduate and professional students. You'll come from a variety of disciplines, have a variety of different experiences, but the library is the common thread that you'll share. Your program is your academic home, but the Graduate School is here to support you with professional development, wellness advice, and resources for your entire Husky experience. We put on career workshops, advise students with fellowship applications, and host social and community building events where you can interact with peers outside of your program. You can also count on us to handle the logistics of your graduate journey, from admissions to requesting your degree. It's one of the hidden ways we are invested in your success. Another is that we work with your programs to provide funding and review and promote academic quality so that your education is rigorous, high quality, and sets you up for success in the future. Lastly, the Graduate School acts as a convener for UW graduate programs. And as part of that role, we house 11 interdisciplinary graduate programs. We also host events that bring together students from across campuses, such as the annual three-minute thesis competition. We at the Graduate School are always open to new ideas on how to make your graduate education a productive and fruitful journey, so please feel free to reach out. In the meanwhile, welcome to the Husky family. Hello, I'm Suzanne Allen. I'm the Vice Dean for Academic, Rural, and Regional Affairs at the University of Washington School of Medicine. Welcome. I would like to introduce you to a few of the exciting things happening at UW School of Medicine. First of all, if you don't know what WAMI is, it's the acronym for our five state medical school and stands for Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. We educate more than 1,100 medical students at six different regional campuses and have over 200 clinical training sites. WAMI was started in 1971 to help increase the physician workforce in the Pacific Northwest and Alaska. WAMI has been integral to our medical school being recognized by US News and World Report as the number one medical school in the country for primary care education and family medicine training for most of the past 30 years. In Seattle, first and second year medical students attend classes in our beautiful new health sciences building on Pacific Street. And clinical training happens at both UW medicine facilities and clinical partnership training sites across the five state WAMI region. In addition to medical education, the School of Medicine has 31 departments that provide clinical care to nearly 2 million patients per year, from outpatient primary care to level one trauma care at Harborview. The UW School of Medicine ranks among the top academic research institutions to receive National Institutes of Health funding and is training the next wave of innovative scientists. Our internationally acclaimed graduate and postdoctoral training programs prepare students to advance science as members of an inclusive research community. Approximately 1,600 graduate students and postdoctoral fellows participate in research in 44 programs, institutes, and centers at the UW School of Medicine. We sponsor more than 120 Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education residency and fellowship programs, which train more than 1,800 residents and fellows each year. We train physician assistants at six regional campuses and have educational training programs in physical therapy, occupational therapy, prosthetics and orthotics, laboratory medicine, and genetic counseling. Our virology lab, led the way in coronavirus testing as Seattle was the U.S. center of the pandemic early in 2020. UW Medicine's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, IHME, the coordinating center for the global burden of disease, continues to provide projections for the pandemic and other significant health issues across the world. These are just a few of the many exciting things happening here at UW School of Medicine. Welcome to the University of Washington. I'm so glad that you're joining us. Hello, congratulations and welcome. 
Welcome to the University of Washington. My name is Renee Chang and I'm Dean of the College of Built Environments. The story of CBE can be experienced all around you. Everything from the room that you woke up in, the green space you see outside your windows, to the transit systems that you use to get to campus, and the closest healthcare facility to your home. Someone or some team designed, planned, financed, or built those rooms, that infrastructure, and the environments that you see. What we teach and research in our college is how to do this better. Sometimes this means faster or cheaper, but we also focus on more innovative, more beautiful, and more just. The built environment is one of the most powerful levers influencing the planet's urgent social and environmental problems. Through collaborations across the university with communities and industries, we will advance prosperity, health, equity, ecosystems, community resilience, and climate solutions. We continue in this world together amidst racial unrest and uncertainty, but one thing we can be confident about, it's clear that we need people like you that understand the relationships between buildings, spaces, places, and society. These are scholars, professionals, and Huskies that believe in the potential of the built world to be more than what it is now, more safe, more healthy, more resilient, more restorative. Our college is home to five departments and over 20 labs and centers, incredible faculty, cutting edge research, and above all, an amazing educational experience. We're excited to embark on this world together. We're committed to working for positive change. You can follow our equity, diversity, and inclusion work on our website and join our working student groups. We're thrilled that all of you are here. We're working on important projects and we hope that you join us as we educate the next generation of designers, builders, and leaders who will shape the built environments and make them better for everyone.
I was actually initially drawn in by the school's emphasis on sustainability. Um, I'm a public administration student uh, hoping to go into environmental management. And when I started looking at schools, I found that over and over again, the University of Washington came up for being recognized for their emphasis on sustainability. <laughs> games everyone was like cheering and it definitely shows a bunch of school spirit and so it definitely shows how unified we can be you know a group of 60,000 kids all coming together for a common purpose hi i'm hillary godwin dean of the school of public health welcome to the university of washington I'm standing in front of the Hans Rosling Center for Population Health, our new home on the western edge of campus. It's a place where we collaborate with people from across the university and with our global and local community partners in our commitment to a world of good. Public health is an amazing field that connects so many things, from the food we eat and the air we breathe to the way we live, work, and play. Public health has always been important, but our field really took center stage when the COVID-19 pandemic started in 2020. SBH is home to groundbreaking discoveries fueled by rigorous science and equity-driven solutions. Faculty, staff, and students throughout the school collaborate in over 50 centers and institutes, tackling the biggest public health challenges of our time, including our new Center for Anti-Racism and Community Health, also known as ARCH, which is led by Dr. Wendy Barrington. ARCH is the community-driven academic hub focused on the critical interrogation and disruption of racism and racialization within systems while centering those most impacted by legacies of U.S. colonization. There are so many deep-rooted factors that affect our health and well-being, so our work in public health has no borders. We strive to create healthy communities here in Washington State and around the world. Through partnerships with organizations such as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Fred Hutch, Seattle Children's Hospital, Youth Care, ACLU, Special Olympics Washington, and more, our students emerge as leaders who are prepared to work in partnership with communities to improve the health of all people. For over 50 years, we have been driven by a passion for social justice, equity, and a commitment to improve the conditions in which all people live. If you are driven by a passion for the greater good, are interested in health, and want to make a difference, I urge you to consider some of our undergraduate classes or programs in public health. Our departments are biostatistics, environmental and occupational health sciences, epidemiology, global health, and health systems and population health. We also offer interdisciplinary programs in health administration, nutritional sciences, public health genetics, and public health global health. Have a great start to this school year. We look forward to seeing you soon on campus and hope that you choose to join us in creating a world of healthy people. Hi, and welcome to Miller Hall, home to the College of Education. My name is Mia Tuan, and as Dean, I am super excited to welcome you to our university. I look forward to seeing you on campus and together making an impact. Ranked one of the nation's best public education schools, UW's College of Education works to transform inequitable systems of education to foster social justice and culturally thriving democracies. Our students are passionate and driven to reimagine what's possible in education. Working closely with faculty, school, and community partners, our students gain hands-on experience where they apply their knowledge and build their skills. Our academic programs are tailored to meet the needs of students across the continuum of educational careers. Through our college's partnerships with more than 300 schools, districts, community-based organizations, and nonprofits, you'll make an impact while you're learning, from internships with community organizations, to student teaching, to conducting research with our nationally recognized faculty. For those of you who are still undecided about your pathway here, Please consider the impact that you could have on the next generation of students and your community with a degree in education. I'm wishing you a safe start to the year and I'm so glad to welcome you to our Husky community. Hi, I wanna welcome you to the University of Washington. My name is Jody Sanford and I'm the Dean of the top ranked Evans School of Public Policy and Governance. It's great to be at UW during this remarkable time in history. The events of the last few years, the inequitable impacts of COVID-19, 
the resulting economic disparities, attacks on democratic processes and institutions, and pervasive violence against black and brown people call on each one of us to lead from where we are. In that context, I'm proud to be the Dean of UW School of Public Policy. Why is that? Policy cuts across all sectors, all disciplines, and affects all corners of and all people in our world. And it can spark change at scale. At the Evans School, undergraduates can gain a deeper appreciation of current issues and trends in public and international affairs, a greater understanding of career opportunities in public service fields, and the knowledge and skills to support careers in public policy. There are a few ways you can get involved. We're expanding a next-gen civic leader core, a place to spark, hone, and recognize a deep commitment that you have to public service. Join us for programming, internships, and time to connect with other changemakers. Take one of our undergraduate courses and consider our minor in public policy. Or join us for one of our Dean's Forum on Race and Public Policy that draws attention to the racialized nature of public policy and institutions as we try to learn more about the past to create the democracy we need for the future. At Evans, we're motivated by our shared values of equity, courage, and service. And we take seriously the imperative to dismantle systemic racism in our institutions and our field. So remember that your voice makes a difference. Start by registering to vote here in Seattle and doing so in November. Stop by our newly renovated Parrington Hall or look us up on the website to learn about our tradition of student activism that has shaped our school and is necessary in the world at this time. Again, welcome to UW. Take great advantage of it. Hi, I'm Maya Tolstoy, and I'm very proud to be the Maggie Walker Dean of University of Washington's College of the Environment. Here in the college, we are training the next generation of environmental scientists and policy innovators who will help us rise to meet the extraordinary challenges facing life on our planet. I don't think it will surprise any of you to hear that right now, Earth is at a crossroads. As we grapple with the parallel crises of climate change, declining biodiversity, and worsening health among those who bear the brunt of environmental degradation, there's never been a more crucial or rewarding time to pursue an education in the environmental sciences. We conduct research from the Earth's core to the cosmos, across all seven continents and in all five of our oceans. We study the complexities of the world's fisheries, forests, and atmosphere, and even explore the surfaces of other planets. And we collaborate closely with frontline communities to ensure that environmental justice and equity are at the center of everything we do. As a student in the College of the Environment, you will have opportunities that are unique even among the world's foremost universities. Your journey could take you to one of our field stations around Puget Sound, to the old growth forests of the Olympic Peninsula and Cascade Range, or to an adventure at sea on one of our research vessels. There is a place here for everyone, whether you've known for years you wanted to be a marine biologist, or if you think your business degree would be enhanced by a better understanding of the natural world. It will take every single one of us to build a sustainable future, and I believe that with your help, that's exactly what we will do. I am delighted to welcome you all to the University of Washington, and I hope that soon I will have the opportunity to welcome you to the College of the Environment as well.
get involved. You know, classes can get tough, school can get very stressful, and if you don't have something to do outside, then things could just get pretty depressing. You know, you always got to have something to keep your body moving, keep your mind fresh, and that'll make all the classes worth it. <laughs> The W. <laughs> I love the W because it's just like, you're at UW, you just gotta do it. I would say just next to the Husky outside the hub, I think these are the best selfies. Let, let, let me show you one. Greetings. I'm Frank Hodge, Dean of the Foster School of Business. I join my wonderful colleagues in welcoming you to the University of Washington. You made a great choice. You're joining one of the world's premier educational institutions. Behind me is Packard Hall, the main business school building where we offer most of our classes. Packard Hall is one of several buildings that make up the Foster School. I'm speaking to you from our newest building, Founders Hall a welcoming and inclusive space built out of mass timber with native art, a diversity lounge, and additional classrooms. Come see it. It's a special place. At the Foster School, we are committed to being better together, better tomorrow. How are we better tomorrow? By being innovative, having a growth mindset, and seeking excellence in everything we do. We are committed to continuous improvement. We and by we, I mean students, faculty, staff, alumni, and business partners challenge each other every day to be better tomorrow than we are today. We work together to create tomorrow's community leaders by developing frameworks for tackling real world, complex, unstructured problems in ethically sound ways. How are we better together? By being inclusive and welcoming everyone who comes through our doors and everyone in the communities that we serve. Being together and coming together to make a difference in our communities is how we do things at the Foster School of Business. Together, we create futures. Come visit us, see what we're all about. We are committed to developing leaders who are passionate about bettering humanity through business. Welcome and go dogs. Hello. My name is Anand Day, and I'm Dean of the Information School. I'm standing in front of Mary Gates Hall, where most of the Information School's academic services are located. Mary Gates Hall is located in the center of campus, partway between Red Square and Drumheller Fountain. We're closely located to some of our closest academic partners, UW Libraries, the College of Engineering, the Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science, and the Human Center Design and Engineering Department, just to name a few. Many of you will not be familiar with the term information school. An information school explores the relationships between people, information, and technology. We investigate the uses and users of information. Our focus is on research, design, and development of information technologies that improve people's lives and demonstrate the impact of our ideas in the real world. We combine technology, a socially minded viewpoint, and a clear picture of the people that we are trying to support. Our research and academic programs are centered around the beliefs that one, information is vital in all aspects of life, two, it has the power to make a better world, and three, that technology plays a pivotal role in creating this outcome. Our highly interdisciplinary community of faculty, staff, and students is driven to create change, and we are leaders of several very exciting University of Washington initiatives. For example, through the Center for an Informed Public, we partner with schools, libraries, and educational institutions to train people of all ages to recognize and resist strategic misinformation campaigns and become more savvy digital consumers. Our work in this space is just one example of our commitment to collaborate across academic disciplines to tackle the biggest problems facing our society and world today, including the future of democracy, supporting health, wellness, and the environment, and using data to advance equity. I encourage you to explore research and course opportunities within the information school. I wish you all the best as you start fall quarter. Regardless of your major or degree plan, I hope you allow yourself the opportunity to explore. Take advantage of an unexpected opportunity this year. There are so many people, courses, clubs, and experiences at the University of Washington. 
allowing yourself the space to try something new might open your eyes to a future you never could have anticipated. Welcome to the University of Washington. We can't wait to see what you accomplish. Hello and welcome to the University of Washington and the College of Engineering. My name is Nancy Albritton. I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering. As a biomedical engineer, I've always been excited about what engineering can contribute to the world. And at this time in our history, I'm particularly excited about how our College of Engineering is positioned to be a worldwide leader. Engineers are problem solvers who design innovative technologies. They find ways to harness new energy, confront climate change. We're building resilient buildings and infrastructure to keep us safe. We're creating just amazing products that we don't think we even need until we learn about them and begin to use them. We are firmly committed to preparing our students for success both in and out of the classroom. Our engineering peer educator program helps first year engineering undeclared students transition into the community while providing upper class students with leadership and mentorship opportunities. We also offer programs such as Engineering Academic Center and the Career Center at Engineering, which provides support from your first day on campus. We provide a project-based real-world learning experience. Our students build rovers, robots, hybrid vehicles. They partner with industry through our industry capstone program. I'm certain that you will be able to pursue your passions and succeed at the University of Washington. I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome you to our campus. Greetings, new Huskies. I'm Diane Harris, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. And on behalf of our faculty, I wanna warmly welcome you to the University of Washington. I'm here standing in the beautiful liberal arts quad with its famous cherry trees. It's situated at the center of our campus, just as the College of Arts and Sciences is at the core of nearly everything we do at the University of Washington. Arts and Sciences is a destination for thousands of students, a place where you can engage with and make a difference for some of the most pressing issues facing our society. We educate the next generation of inventors, leaders, and change makers. We excel at making students ready for a wide range of fulfilling careers in the dynamic job market of the 21st century. Here in Arts and Sciences, you'll work with some of the world's most innovative thinkers and researchers as you grapple with topics like climate change, equity and justice, quantum science, technology and ethics, globalization, and much more. You'll have the opportunity to delve into unique courses led by outstanding teachers, participate in research projects with world-renowned scholars, and create alongside practicing artists. With over 100 majors and programs, the college is the place to dive into the arts, humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. You'll discover new interests and connect with others in unexpected ways. The past couple of years have shown us the importance of adaptability in the face of change, and the College of Arts and Sciences is uniquely positioned to prepare you to thrive in uncertain times. Your perseverance and talents have brought you this far, and we look forward to learning and growing with you in this next exciting stage of your journey. Congratulations again. I look forward to meeting you and welcoming you to our vibrant and beautiful campus. Ladies and gentlemen, our program will begin shortly. Please be seated and turn off all cell phones.
Ladies and gentlemen, our program will begin shortly. Please be seated and turn off all cell phones. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are very proud to present the University of Washington Wind Ensemble under the direction of Professor Timothy Salzman. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
We'd like to begin this ceremony by acknowledging the land on which the university rests, the land of the Coast Salish peoples, which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Today, we celebrate together. The 2022 University of Washington New Student Convocation will be open with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Nathaniel Voth, an entering doctoral student working towards a Doctor of Musical Arts degree in voice performance. Nathaniel will be accompanied by the University Wind Ensemble, conducted by Professor Timothy Saltzman of the School of Music. We ask those who are able to please My name is Joseph Jaynes and I'm the University Marshal. The rest of the year, I'm an Associate Professor in the Information School, but as University Marshal, I have the honor and privilege of offering you our first words of official greeting. It also means I'm your first professor. So I get to give you your first lesson. How many of us, first of all, are first generation college students? I am too. And once I sat where you sit, in a different place at time, at a convocation on my first day, and my strongest memory of that day was all of this, the symbols and signs you see all around us. If you look around, you'll see banners representing each of the university's schools and colleges arranged in historical order, starting with the College of Arts and Sciences and ending with the School of Public Health. These are called gonfalons a word that comes to us from 12th century Florence, Italy. On your commencement day, some of you will carry the gonfalon for your school or college, and the rest of you will march in behind. On that day, you'll also see these four ionic columns. These are replicas of the columns that graced the facade of the university's first building, the Territorial University, that opened over 160 years ago in 1861 in what is now downtown Seattle. At that time, Washington was not yet a state, and Seattle a village of fewer than 200 people. Those original columns, which now live over in Sylvan Grove, bear witness to the foresight of the people of early Washington. The columns and the banners are special parts of our university traditions, but it's not just this university's life and traditions you are joining. You are entering into an ancient and continuous process of teaching and learning that goes back centuries all around the world. Think about the magnificent Suzalo Library, named for a former president who laid out a vision of the University of Washington in the 1920s as the university of a thousand years. And if you're going to have a university of a thousand years, that is the library you put right in the middle of it. There and in every corner of this university, you will find a substantial chunk of the sum of human knowledge. And our faculty and students are adding to that every day. There are also substantial gaps in what is here. Questions unanswered and unasked. Voices unheard and unrecorded. 
And all of this now lies before you. All of this is symbolized in the medieval regalia we wear on these occasions, in the president's medallion, and by the special ritual object the university marshal carries in our ceremonies, the mace. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority that reminds us that universities are custodians both of enduring traditions of learning and of the power they bestow on those who come to learn. The University of Washington mace is topped by a lovely rendition of Drumheller Fountain, which was originally created as the centerpiece of a 1909 World's Fair held here in Seattle, known as the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exhibition. Our mace is embellished with finely wrought metal sculptures of the University Seal, the Territorial University, and Denny Hall. Denny Hall was built in 1895 when the campus moved here from downtown Seattle, and it houses a 400-pound bell that was rung at the Territorial University downtown to signal the start of classes and also to mark historic occasions such as the assassination of President Lincoln. Today, we ring it for homecoming. So you might be asking, what's all this for? And what comes next? Well, we come together as a university community twice a year, at commencement and at this convocation, twin moments of transition and transformation. And the mace is always there. If you think about it, the images carved into the mace take us in a straight line from the original site of the university to Drumheller Fountain to Denny Hall. And who's in the middle of that line right now? You are. You come next. You are why we are all here. Today is your moment of transition and transformation. Today, you end one stage of your lives and start another. Hold this moment. Think about what you've achieved so far and the people who have loved and supported you along the way. And the next you. You are now part of us and we will be part of you. With our help, you will change yourselves, each other, and us, and the world. I can't tell you how much I envy the opportunity and adventure that lies before you and I can't wait to see all the marvels you produce and when it really matters and it's really important, ask a librarian. You're welcome, and I wish you all the best. It is now my very great pleasure to introduce to you the president of the University of Washington, Professor Anamari Kause. Thank you, Professor James. And hello, new Huskies. It's mine, it's our great pleasure to officially welcome you to the University of Washington. But before I continue, yeah, come on, let's clap one more time. But before I continue, I want you to know that the absolutely splendid music that you've been listening to this morning is being provided for us by students of our School of Music's Wind Ensemble under the direction of Professor Timothy Salzman. As you can tell, they're gifted musicians and we greatly appreciate their participation here today. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce our stage party today beginning with our regents. The university's board of regents consists of 10 citizens of the state who are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the state senate. These dedicated men and women devote many hours each year to the welfare of the university. Three of them are with us here this morning and I'd like to introduce them at this time. Please hold your applause until I introduce them all. Regent David Zeek, chair of the board, Regent William S. Eyre, and Regent Elizabeth Lee, the student member of the boards. Ladies and gentlemen, the regents of the University of Washington. Also, seated with us on the platform are the deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges, the senior administrative leadership of the university, faculty members, 
and representatives from the student body and alumni association, would all of you please stand and allow us to thank you for being here. Now, once again, it's my great pleasure to join everyone on the stage and across our campus in welcoming you, all our incoming students, to the University of Washington. To be here today, each of you forged a very unique pathway. And it's really important to recognize that fact because one of the core things that you should know about being a student here at the university is there's no one right way to succeed here. The journey that brought you this far belongs to you alone, and so will your journey from here to graduation. At the UW, we like to call that journey the Husky Experience. And the most important work that we do as faculty and staff is to help you discover the amazing opportunities that will let you make your Husky experience meaningful, fulfilling, challenging, occasionally hard, but also very, very joyful. You'll find countless opportunities in your classrooms and in your laboratories and in the UW's outstanding libraries, and in all our research and discovery centers. But I hope that you'll also look beyond them to places like the Burke Museum, the Henry Art Gallery, the Jones Playhouse, the Meany Performing Arts Center. While you're here, investigate all of the opportunities that we have to offer. In fact, I'll challenge you to do something that you never thought you'd be interested in, you might be surprised. We have so many opportunities. You might pursue research, study abroad, join one of our over 800 registered students' organizations, or do an internship. I can promise you, no matter how quirky your interests are, there will be other people with similar quirks. Um, just last week before our football game, we had a fabulous student, Ben Roscoe, who was telling us that one of the things that he did while he was here is he started a lettuce eating contest. Exactly. So explore. You never know where it will take you. Listen to your curiosity. And wherever your curiosity and enthusiasm take you throughout your college career, your story will be unique, but it won't be solitary. Community is at the heart of everything we do at the University of Washington. Maybe the most important part of your Husky experience will be finding the people who make that journey possible and being the person who makes their journey possible. As you settle in, you're likely to find that your community takes shape in overlapping circles. You'll have friends that are there for you when you need to laugh or cry. You might have fellow activists who share your passion for building a more just and equitable world. Or you might have classmates that are the only one who can truly relate to you when you're ready to geek out. You will have different friends that you will enjoy different things with. And I encourage you to find those overlapping circles. I know that many, probably most of you, have spent significant portions of your education doing remote learning. And like everyone in the last few years, you've been living, you have lived through the worst of the pandemic, and it has been profoundly isolating. Frankly, we've probably all lost some ground in how to relate to each other and work together. But together is where we need to be right now. Look at this room. Look at the energy here. We are back together. And together is how we're going to create change in a world that urgently needs it. Together is how we'll find inspiration and the people who will challenge us to stretch ourselves. 
And together is how we give and receive empathy and comfort. And that's what will make us resilient. So find your people. Find them at a Husky game. Go dogs, looking pretty good, huh? Or at an eSports lounge at the Hub. Look for them at Friday Harbor Labs or at the Samuel E. Kelly Ethnic Cultural Center. Find the people who care about you. Find the people who care about the same things that you care about. And people whose lived experiences resonate with yours. But also, find those people whose perspectives you've never considered and who are going to stretch you at times beyond your comfort point. That's how we learn. And as you create your one-of-a-kind Husky experience, the one thing I hope you all have in common is that you're fueled by the powerful bonds of a strong community. And to the families that we have here today, parents, siblings, extended family, chosen family, you are a vital part of our community too. Your love, your support, your encouragement has been essential to your student success. And it doesn't stop here. You will continue to be critical to your student success. Thank you for trusting the University of Washington to support and inspire the people who are the most precious to you. And please know that you are part of the Husky family as well. And now I'm going to leave you with this. As you find your community, community and pull together the threads of curiosity that you're going to weave into your own Husky experience, remember that your university is here to support you, to empower you. We want to be part of your community, and we're so happy that you've chosen to be a part of ours, because I know that you had many other choices. Ask for help, not if you need it, but when you need it. Asking for help is a sign of strength, and it's a key part of how we thrive. It is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. Your Husky experience begins today, and we are all thrilled to be a part of it. Welcome to the University of Washington. Thank you, President Kause. And now, I'd like to introduce you to the man who oversees all of the units on campus that will serve as your support crew on this extraordinary journey you're about to begin. It's a huge responsibility, and we, were, we are deeply privileged to have a uniquely qualified leader in this role. Please join me in welcoming our Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Denzel Sweet. Hello, new Huskies. It is really great to see you all here. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that the last time we welcomed an in entering class of students in this arena, it was 2019. And although that was only a few years ago, it feels like an eternity. So it's incredibly wonderful to welcome you in person. Now, you just heard President Kause talk about the journey of discovery that you will be taking while you're here that we call the Husky Experience. The Division of Student Life is really a group of units. We are all here to be your support team on that journey. The Hub, UW Recreation, Housing and Food Services, Disability Resources, Hall Student Health Center, Student Veteran Life, and others are all part of that team. In conjunction with our partners across campus, Student Life supports your health and well-being brings supportive communities together, and cultivates opportunities for you to build your own pathway to success at the UW. And as you begin that journey, it may feel a little overwhelming. There is a lot to learn. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I want you to know that I will offer you just a few tips, a few student life hacks, if you will, to make the journey a little easier and perhaps a little more rewarding. My first student life hack is to please get involved. Now, there is no question 
that your academic pursuits, they need to remain your number one priority. But I want you to hear me when I tell you that your Husky experience, it will be incomplete if all you do is go to class, go home and study all night. We know from years of experience and research that students who participate in groups and activities, who attend events on campus, or who hold officer positions in student government, these students graduate at higher rates, they are more satisfied with the college experience, they have better grades, and they are less likely to drop out. In short, your involvement outside the classroom will define your Husky experience every bit as much as what you do inside the classroom. We have almost 1,000 student groups called registered student organizations. Join one. Write for our student newspaper, The Daily, or participate in intramural sports. Sometimes there's even free food. <laughs> <laughs> student life hack number two, ask questions. Part of being at the UW involves navigating a large, complex place. We do not expect that you have all the answers. And I want to join President Kausi in encouraging you to ask for help. I've been at the UW for almost 10 years, but I still need help from time to time, and there are plenty of things that I'm still learning. When I don't know something or I need help, I ask. We have many physical and mental health resources available for your support, including care available at the Hall Health Center, peer coaching, and counseling appointments, just to name a few. There are also plenty of resources. If you're experiencing any kind of emergency, please just ask. When you ask questions, you literally never know what you can learn. For instance, I found out about a new use for my UW hoodie. Who knew? <laughs> my, my last and final tip is simple to say, but not so simple to put in practice, and that is to challenge yourselves. Over the last 161 years, the University of Washington has educated thousands of students. Every one of them has struggled at times. One UW student worked two, sometimes three jobs while going to class full time. He wore worn out clothes, his family wasn't that supportive, and sometimes he couldn't even afford dinner. He ended up spending quite a bit of time right near here on the waterfront, in fact, as a member of UW's rowing team. Joe Ranch challenged himself as his team raced against big universities and won. Then, rowing in the 1936 Olympics in Germany with Adolf Hitler watching, they showed the entire world what Huskies stand for. Integrity, diversity, excellence, collaboration, innovation, and respect. Together, they won a gold medal. You might know Joe's story from a book called The Boys in the Boat, and a, a little-known director is even working on a movie about the team, which will come out next fall. Not sure I've heard of this guy, but while you're here, <clears throat> all I ask is that you find a way to challenge yourself. For me, I'm even considering taking some acting lessons. <laughs> I'm not even going to look up. So <laughs> you've got three student life hacks. Get involved, ask for help, and challenge yourself. These small actions can make a world of difference. It is my sincerest hope that you will explore all the opportunities available to you on, your ca on this campus, just like your fellow students. And speaking of your fellow students, I'd like to introduce to you two individuals who are making the most of their Husky journeys. Timothy Building is majoring in international studies and psychology and is starting his senior year as president of the Associated uh, Students of the University of Washington. AJ Blatico is a PhD candidate in learning sciences and human development in the College of Education, and he's the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate. You'll hear from Timothy first, then AJ. Thank you. Hello, new Huskies, and welcome to the start of your journey here at UW. Now, it wouldn't be a start of a journey without reflecting on the path 
that you took to get here. The hard work, the losses, the perseverance through countless unprecedented times, and overall drive to receive an education that will unlock a door into understanding a little bit more about this complicated world. During my time at UW, I have chosen that exact topic of understanding this world and the role I can play in it. I study international studies and psychology, which means I go from one class explaining the significance of sound economic policies that drive up the middle class to the next about why I should really stop staying up until 3 a.m. watching Netflix for my mental health. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> But the thing about my majors and about being in college in general is that you begin to understand the significance of each individual in the world. We have all started to see ourselves more in this world due to COVID and began to recognize how we can each have a significant impact on the world around us. This pandemic pushed us to spend more time with ourselves. Instead of constantly hanging out with people, going to movies, or even a college party, we got to know ourselves with all the flaws and strengths we hold. Now here, now we are here again amongst one another. We are all taking a step into our new selves and welcoming a new journey, a journey to bring who we are to the world and to show we can come back stronger. UW will push you in many ways, but you are not alone. Be confident in who you are while embracing change. Understand that you and this community are what makes UW significant. You may not get an A or even close to it in every class. Don't ask me about Econ 200. You may consider giving up or you may get straight, uh, straight A's, four O's and become the next president of the United States. Every adult says it, but your college years are truly some of the hardest, most chaotic, but also the most rewarding years of your life. As an elderly 21 year old, I want to remind you that this is your journey and this community is here to support you. I ask that you look back with gratitude and thank the people who have gotten you this far. I ask that you look around you at your peers who are meeting you where you are and accepting you. And I ask you to look forward to who you will become and the role you want to play. You are now Huskies for life and a big part of what this makes this community significant. Congratulations Huskies and welcome to UW. Before, before starting my doctoral program, I was a high school science teacher this past decade, the first message I wanted to tell my students has always been, come as you are, you belong here, you are enough. At the University of Washington, you get to choose your own adventure. It's structured like a video game. This is like the opening cinematic, and soon you'll be at the character creation menu. You have choices, but I would advise that you pick the character that resembles the true you. You are enough. The main quest is the path to your degree, but there are lots of side quests too. You'll meet some people in class, but you'll meet more people in the hundreds of clubs on campus and your student governments, ASUW and GPSS. There's a lot of content, and sometimes it can be a challenge to figure out what exactly you want to do. At last year's convocation, Dean Ed Taylor reflected on the idea of Gaman, or enduring the seemingly unbearable with patience and dignity. This sticky note has been in my office wall for over a year, and I highly recommend that you listen and apply the lessons from the folks on stage today. Seemingly unbearable, overwhelming sometimes. College can be like that. When you have to choose between doing the things you love with people you care about and studying for that midterm, you'll have to choose between sleep and last minute edits at 1159.59. Balancing the job that keeps you here with getting the grade that keeps you here and applying to things. However, you won't be doing that alone. As the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate, I represent the 15,000 master's and doctoral students who will be your teaching and research assistants, instructors, staff, and mentors. We were all graduates, undergraduate students once. 
If you ask us, we'll talk about our college experience until you signal for us to stop. My office is on the third floor of the hub. I invite you to drop by between classes. I want to meet you. I want to hear about your Husky experience. Come as you are. You belong here. You are enough. Hang in there, Huskies. You're allowed to feel. Love is love. Shinzo Sasageo. Dedicate your hearts to the University of Washington, where there is light. Thank you, good luck, and have fun. Well, one of the things we want to do today is to introduce you, the entering class, to our faculty deans and the university community. At the same time, we also want to tell them a little bit about you. There is no one more familiar with the incoming class than our Dean of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, Dr. Ed Taylor. Dean Taylor is a graduate of Gonzaga University and received his PhD from the University of Washington. He's been a member of the faculty in the College of Education since 1994. Please join me in welcoming Dean Ed Taylor. Remember when you turn 21, at least in my present, please do not say I'm an elderly 21. <laughs> I want to welcome you in a moment, but, but first, I, I have a question for you, for, for all of you. How did you get here? How, how did you get here to, to this place and, and now? Was it, was it hope that got you here? Emily Dickinson in 1861 said, hope is the thing with feathers, perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. And in her last stanza, she says, yet never in extremity, it asks a crumb of me. She speaks to the power of hope, especially during difficult times. How did you get here? Was it hope? Parents and, and loved ones, chosen loved ones, no one knows more about hope than, than you. For some of you, that journey of hope started the moment these babies opened their eyes and you gazed at them and they gazed at you and your life forever changed at that moment as they saw you. Oh, the the songs that you've sung, the hymns that you have hummed over these years, the pages that you have turned of book after book after book. Hopefully, you read some of the classics, Velveteen Rabbit, Pat the Bunny, Where the Wild Things Are, The Night Max Wore His Wolf Suit and Made Mischief of One Kind or Another. I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as you're with me, my baby you'll be. Oh, the pages that you have turned to get here, the wisdom that you have shared, the hymns that you have hummed, you wouldn't be here if you weren't hopeful people. Did hope lead you here? What light did you follow to get here? Because as it's been said, we have been through a journey of mythological proportions and we find ourselves here in the stadium together. And let's make note of the fact that many who started on this journey with us just a few years ago did not make it here and did not make it through. Far too many people did not, and we hold them in the light. We hold them here with us. So we are here, and it begs the question now. We have to ask the question, what shall we do with this precious time that we've been given together? What are we going to do, all of us, and what are you going to do with the precious time that we have been given? Perhaps, as James Baldwin said, we can begin again. For parents and loved ones, just think you started somewhere and you've brought them here. And in a matter of moments, you will turn and go one way, and they will turn and go another direction, and you will begin again. Students. You've come through some form of schooling and you thought you were finished and you threw your caps and gowns in the mortarboard. You didn't throw your gowns, you threw your caps. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you threw your gowns. <laughs> and here you are. 
with the opportunity to, as Baldwin says, begin again. So what does that mean? To begin again means that you'll be fully present to this place, not just move through it. I know you'll want to be in a hurry, but be fully present to this whole thing. Even more, it's not enough just to be at UW. You have to be the University of Washington. You are the University of Washington. To begin again means that not you just not complete your education here. But I want you to know this much, that as you move through, your education will stay with you the rest of your lives. It will never leave you. That's to begin again. Among the many things that we've learned, those of us who were on this campus in 2020 was an interesting experience. There were buildings, there were still residence halls, there were classrooms, there were still the hub, there were facilities. They were all here. We were a campus, but we weren't a university. We are not a university without you. You are the University of Washington. What makes a university in Washington distinct and special? Well, we're a three-dimensional institution. We come from the past, as you've heard. We are the present, and we all represent the, the future. You are indeed nourished by the shared waters that connected all the tribes and bands, the Duwamish, the Puyallup, the Suquamish, the Tulalip, and Muckleshoot peoples. We're a part of that tradition and part of that history and part of that narrative. When you enter Terry and Lander Halls, you are connected to Edward Lander, who donated land, Charlie and Mary Terry, who donated acres for a university on a campus in 1861. They had hoped for a campus. When you enter Denny Hall, you become part of the story of Arthur Denny, who dedicated eight acres of land for a campus around the same time. When you graduate, you will be tied to Clary McCarty, who graduated in 1876 with her degree. She paid $30 per year for tuition. As you enter Suzelo and Gerberding Hall, you are part of a tradition of leadership on our campus. When you step on Red Square, you're part of a tradition of people that held up their fists and said, no more war, we want peace, get out of Vietnam. In 1980, people who raised their hands and says, no more apartheid in South Africa, all of that happened on Red Square. You are part of a tradition here. You're part of a tradition of those students who shook hands with the young Martin Luther King on campus when he came to visit and spoke to students and said, student movements have changed the soul of the United States. Student movements changed the soul, saved the soul of the nation. And he also said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can. There were hands that shook hands with Students who shook hands with John F. Kennedy when he spoke in 1961 and said, the world and the country needs educated people to take up the cause of peace and the cause of freedom. He was talking to students. Hands waved on this stage about 15 years ago when Desmond Tutu sat on this stage and the Dalai Lama sat next to him and they told stories of joy. They laughed and they talked about hope. They talked about you. Soon, in a matter of days, your hands are going to go up in Cane Hall when you know the answer to a question. Your hands are going to go up in Cane Hall and you're going to realize you don't know the answer to a question. It'll come, <laughs> it'll come down. Keep raising your hand. Keep raising your hand. We are full of hope. And who are you as an entering class? Who are you? So you've heard it. You're the largest class in the history of the University of Washington. How much talent is in this room? 7,200 7, freshmen and 1,500 transfers. That's worth an applause itself. <laughs> Over 3,000 of you are Washington residents. 1,192 transfers from community colleges. Many, as Joe James referenced, are the first in your family to go to college. In this class, there are 39 Hannahs, but only one Hannah. Andrew, are you here, Hannah? <laughs> there are 39 Sophias. Sophia, are you here? There are 38 Elizabeths, 37 Isabellas, 33 Chloes, 44 Ryans, <laughs> 40 Matthews, 40 Ethans, 37 Benjamins, 35 Joshuas, 
one Oceana and one Stuart. You didn't read Stuart Little? There's only one Stuart. Stuart, are you here, Oceana? <laughs> There's one Steve here who's getting his PhD right in the second row. Cyrus is here from Bremerton. Caitlin is here. Whiting is here from New York. You're from high schools and community colleges from all over the world. In this class, 115 students from Newport, 112 from Inner Lake. You can cheer if you hear your school, and you can boo at me if you don't hear yours. From Skyline, there are a whole lot. There are Redmond. You're from Cleveland. Garfield and Franklin, your brothers and sisters now. Kamiak is here. Spokane Area High Schools, 88 from from Spokane Area High Schools. You're from G Prep, you're from Ferris, you're from Rogers, North Central, Shadle Park, West Valley, you're from Ballard, you're from Blanchette. One student from the Center School in Seattle. You're from Chief South, you're from Foster High School, Rainer Beach, Shorewood, Kings High School has 11 schools. Moses Lake, Soap Lake, the lakes are represented. Edmonds is here, Everett is here. You're from nearly every community college in the state. Skagit Valley, Cascadia, Edmonds, Highline, Bellevue, Clover Park. There are grad students in this room, over 100 grad students that are here for us today. 12 of you were homeschooled. See the little homes? 12 of our homeschoolers are here. Thank you, homeschoolers. Special recognition for the four students from Pullman, Washington, who saw the light. <laughs> who saw the light. You're home now, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 143 waddle across the border from Oregon. You are from all around the world. You're from China, you're from Japan, you're from Turkey, Mongolia, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Belgium, Cambodia, Ecuador, Egypt, Panama. You're from Russia, you're from Ukraine. May your families be safe and well. May there be peace in your homes. You're from the states of California, Oregon, Minnesota, Florida, Wisconsin. We honor the military veterans who have served and who will serve a special applause for you. You are as talented as any class that we've ever had. You are as talented as ever any class we've ever had. On average, now make no mistake on what I'm about to say, on average, your grade point average on average was 3.83. Last year's class was 3.82, see? See that difference? <laughs> now, let me be clear about this. There are some people in last year's class who are booing here. Let me be clear about this. No one from here is going to ask you your grade point average, except perhaps when you go home for holiday and your aunts and uncles. And when the question comes up, you have my permission to say, Uncle Jimmy, thank you for asking about my grades. But Professor James hasn't turned in his grades yet, so it's going to take a little, a little time. Or Try, you know, Dad, I'm vegan, so hold the roast beef and pass the vegetables. Or my favorite, Grandma, can I show you my new tattoo? <laughs> that will change the conversation from your grades. That will change the conversation, at least for a moment, from your grades to something far more important. Our society, our community is better with you in it. Let us begin anew. Let us begin again toward a beloved community. I want to say a few things about what I, we, all hope for you. But before so, I'm shine a light. Let's light the place up. Hold up your light. Hold up your light. If you have a phone, hold up a light. If you have a glow stick, give it a click. Yeah, hold up your phone too. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Let's hold each other in the light. Hold up the light. Light up your phones. We're gonna offer a few wishes to you. Hold up a light. Let's hold these students in the light. May you develop the wisdom to turn to things that matter the most rather than be at the mercy of those things that matter the least. May you remember that your greatest glory is not in never failing, but rising every time you fall. May we learn together and in so doing prioritize friendship, love, and community. May you know when it is best to have heart without words rather than words without heart. To have heart without words rather than words without heart. May you be humble, wise, and, and persevere. 
May you remember that darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can. May your light hold the memory of those who didn't make it with, us, with you on this journey, who didn't make it through. May hope remain perched in your soul. May hope remain perched in your soul and never stop. On the count of three, hold up your light and as loud as you can, on the count of three, say, go Huskies. One, two, three. Go Congratulations, welcoming class, welcome. does this to me every year. I lost my place. Hang on a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. For the record, I turned my grades in before the deadline. Thank you very much. Which is, to, the registrar is here. She will stipulate it's Tuesday at five o'clock. I am always in by Tuesday at noon because I don't want to get stuck in the line. Okay. Where the heck am I? Uh, thank you, Dean Taylor. <laughs> You, you give me a hard time about turning in grades. We haven't even had a class yet, and you're giving me a hard time. Info 200, Thursday morning. You're good, okay? You're good. We're, we'll be fine. We've learned a great deal about you, the entering class, and now we'd like to introduce you to some of the faculty members who will be your teachers and mentors for the next four years. They are experts in nearly every imaginable field, and every day they are engaged in research and scholarship that is impacting our world in profound ways. The person who leads our faculty is our provost, Mark Richards. As provost, Dr. Richards is the university's chief academic and budget officer and the person who works most closely with the deans and the faculty to shape your academic experience. Dr. Richards is also a professor of earth and space sciences in the College of the Environment. Please join me in welcoming our provost, Mark Richards. Thank you, Joe. I'm the person who has the unenviable task of speaking after Dean Ed Taylor. <laughs> Ed is a treasure. Ed, thank you so much for all you do for our students. And to all of our students and to the parents, and on the behalf of the faculty of the University of Washington, welcome to the University of Washington. And welcome. As Ed said, and as Denzel Sweet said, you are not coming to the University of Washington, you are the University of Washington, as are our faculty. It's my role today to introduce you to our faculty. These are the professors who will teach and guide and mentor and inspire you throughout your time at the University of Washington. They recognize that the past few years have been anything but normal and our faculty are dedicated to helping you start this academic year in a meaningful, productive way. They have spent the last several months, actually their whole careers, <laughs> creating and developing a quality learning experience for you. Our UW professors are bringing their vast expertise, knowledge, and experience into the classroom, the lab, and the studio. Your professors are teachers, scientists, researchers, writers, artists who care deeply about your education, your academic success. Our faculty include 17 MacArthur Fellows, 195 members of the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, 103 members of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, to which, by the way, our president was just introduced this, this fall. <laughs> 193 fellows of the American Association of the Advancement of Science, and the university has also been home to seven Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> like you, they come from nearly every state in the United States and dozens of countries throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, and Australia. They receive their advanced degrees from among the best universities and institutions in the world. Harvard, Illinois, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, Princeton, 
Michigan, Cambridge. Oh, and University of Washington, too. Yes. They represent what is truly a United Nations of higher education. Our faculty also work all over the world. I'm the provost, but I'm also a professor of Earth and Space Sciences. I study volcanic rocks in India. Other professors research penguins in Argentina, use DNA in forensic science to save elephants in Africa, and advocate for human rights in Guatemala. Still others examine how people use social media in the wake of natural disasters, such as the ones we are now experiencing and explore three-dimensional pr printing with clay. And entire teams of UW faculty are researching the causes, impacts, preventions, and cures for COVID-19, monkeypox, and other diseases. You will have noticed, for example, that the Institute for Health Metrics at the University of Washington had a very high, has had a very high profile through this pandemic, and many of our medical scientists have saved many lives over the past several years. The university's global reach is perhaps one reason it was recently ranked number seven among world universities and number two among public universities in the United States. Our graduate and professional degree programs are widely recognized as among the best in the nation, with eight subjects placing in the top 10 in subject rankings by US News and World Report. Those rankings have everything to do with our faculty and everything to do with you, our students. As students, you will get a world-class education from a world-class faculty. As faculty, our biggest motivation for being at the University of Washington is that we love to work with students. We have a lot of other options, but there's nothing like working with students. You inspire us. And we are here to help you explore new worlds of knowledge and intellectual adventure. Even as a first year student, you, be, you can become involved in the university's mission of research, teaching, and public service. Your education is interactive, so don't wait, jump in. You can start by going to class. <laughs> Get to know your professors. They really want to get to know you, too. Visit during their office hours. Send them a message. Don't be shy. Ask their advice. If you are struggling, tell them. Ask them about their research and their writing and their teaching. I can give you a shameless plug here myself as a faculty member, not just provost. Uh, this winter, I get to teach a freshman seminar called History and Evolution of the Earth. And I will tell you a secret. If you take that course and you knock on my door during office hours and say, can you tell me a little more about how giant tortoises got to be on the Galapagos? Or what, why the dinosaurs disappeared? I'll skip my lunch. I'll postpone my meeting with the president. I'll drop everything and I will talk to you about it. I can say the same for all of our faculty here. We are motivated because we want to help students. We want to make an impact on students' lives and because we love, love to discover and create new knowledge and we love to share that with our students. Professor Taylor runs one of the largest, most successful and dynamic undergraduate research programs in the world here at the University of Washington. You've probably heard this. You're at a research university. You're at a place that not only transmits, disseminates knowledge, but we create and we discover new knowledge. And we want all of our students to particip participate in that process. And you should start that process as soon as you can as freshmen and discover the incredible opportunities that are here at the University of Washington. You are the reason we are here.
Now, today, I have the additional privilege and honor of introducing a teacher who has long been a student favorite at the University of Washington. Mikkel Neuer is an associate teaching professor in the School of Oceanography in my college, the College of the Environment, where she instructs students in the geologic history of the Pacific Northwest, the physics and chemistry of coastal waters, and marine food webs and ecology. Dr. Neuer was a laboratory technician and research assistant in the School of Oceanography for many years before earning her PhD in biological oceanography in 2008. She has devoted herself to teaching oceanography and to the art and technology of teaching itself ever since. Professor Neuer. Thank you, Provost. It is an honor to be on this stage with such esteemed members of the university community. And it is a true privilege to welcome you, all of you, to the University of Washington's community. Convocation marks your beginning of your time at the University of Washington. Savor this moment. Your time on campus will fly by. Savor this moment and recognize it for the beginning that it is. It feels like just a few short years ago that I started my first year at UW. In reality, it was almost three decades ago that I was seated in the audience at Convocation. I remember being so overwhelmed. I do not remember what any of the faculty members said. <laughs> I do remember alternating between thoughts of giddiness and elation to manic thoughts and panic because I knew at the end of this ceremony, I would say goodbye to my parents and return to my dorm room alone. I remember walking to convocation and wondering how I was going to find my way around this huge campus and how I could make it from Kane Hall to the oceanography building in only 10 short minutes. <laughs> I remember looking around the audience and wondering if I would recognize anyone on Wednesday in my 8.30 a.m. general chemistry course. I remember wondering if I would make friends, if I would fit in, if I was smart enough, capable enough. I remember questioning if I would make it through my first quarter at university. Well, I did, and now I am here welcoming you. But the emotions I felt almost three decades ago are still very real. And that is why I would like to spend the next few minutes sharing with you the words that I needed to hear at Convocation. And from teaching introductory courses for so many years, the words that I know many new students need to hear. I want to begin by reminding you that you do not need to fit in. You belong here. Seattle is a city, and this is a campus that values diversity. Faculty, staff, students, we will honor your unique identity. We will welcome you, and we will make an effort to learn about who you are and who you want to become. On this campus, you will make lifelong friends maybe with that stranger you're sharing a dorm room with, or in one of the many student organizations that you join. And if you can't find one you want to join, start one. I know others will join you. I want to also emphasize something Provost Richards just said, because it is so important. Our faculty are here because of you. We are here because of you, and we are here for you. Here at the University of Washington, we are committed to excellence in teaching. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you succeed in your studies. Introduce yourself to your faculty instructors. And yes, attend office hours 
These are times that we reserve for you to get to know you, to answer your questions, to facilitate your learning. But you have to show up. I mean that literally, as in show up to office hours and your scheduled classes, but also show up by being prepared to learn and ask for help when you need it. You will need it. If you didn't, you wouldn't be taking a course in it. Participate in classroom activities and cooperate with your peers to find creative solutions to the complex problems that you are introduced to in the classroom. I also am going to reiterate that it's very unlikely that you will get straight A's your first quarter here. And that it's okay, parents, to get B's and C's. <sighs> Remember that you are now surrounded by top scholars, students who are willing to work as hard as you are, students with accomplishments comparable to yours. And instead of focusing on grades, focus on the learning. Very few employers care about a student's grades. What they care about is who you are and what you can do. So instead of taking the introductory courses that you heard were easy, take the courses that you hear are interesting and that will make you more interesting. Take the courses that will introduce you to new ideas where you can apply your knowledge and practice new skills. All across this campus, faculty right now are tailoring their courses to facilitate your learning and to provide opportunities for you to immerse yourself in your coursework. Take advantage of the opportunities that being enrolled in a top-ranked institution allows. Immerse yourself in your learning by enrolling in experiential and service learning courses, in studio and design build courses. You can pair any major and minor with another to create a degree that is uniquely you. Students enrolled in communication and business are interning at startups and Fortune 500 companies. Students in the Build Environment Center for Integrated Design are working to improve the design and operation performance of buildings to improve human health and well being. Teams of students in engineering are building and designing or designing and building medical training devices and drones to fight wildfires. Students enrolled in art, art history and design are showcasing their works across buildings on this campus and leading interactive exhibits in the Henry Art Gallery. Since I am an oceanographer, I want to share with you what it means to take advantage of the academic opportunities in the UW School of Oceanography. Students enrolled in our courses learn how to design, build, and deploy sensors and robots to monitor ocean change. Students in our program do their own research aboard the two research vessels operated by the University of Washington and learn how to code in Python to analyze and visualize the data they collect. First and second year students set sail aboard the research vessel Carson to monitor the Puget Sound and our senior students travel to wherever the RV Thompson is deployed to conduct their senior research projects. The class of 2022 sailed from Hawaii to San Diego on route mapping a new volcanic underwater field and the extent of the great garbage patch in the North Pacific gyre. They collected and analyzed microplastics for associated toxins. They measured changes in water column ocean acidification and studied gene expression in phytoplankton 
the plant-like organisms in the ocean. These students also have opportunities to study at Friday Harbor Labs, UW's marine station in the San Juan Islands, where they can take courses and complete research, research apprenticeships. Our students have the opportunity to travel to Micronesia, where they learn about past climate change and get to live among the people whose island and culture are disappearing or travel to Australia to use robots to study coral reef ecosystems. These students are just like you. These students are using cutting edge instrumentation and technology to research ecological and environmental change. These students are making new discoveries and solving real world problems. Students just like you who are willing to work hard Students who persevere through challenges. Students who have sought out transformative learning opportunities in and out of the classroom. Students who are boundless. Students who are committed to showing that what they care about will change the world. This ceremony is the beginning of that change for you. It is also a time for goodbyes. As you are saying goodbye to your family and friends after this ceremony, let them hug you and hug them back. Smile when they make you pose in front of Husky Stadium. Stay connected to your family and friends back home while building your UW community and call your family often. You will need them. And make sure you let them know your plans to change the world. Welcome to the University of Washington. <laughs> we are so glad you are here. And for those of you curious, if you can make it from Kane Hall to the Oceanography Building in 10 minutes, you can. Come to my office hours. I'll show you how. <laughs> Seriously, office hours. We're not kidding. Thursday, 1.30. See you then. Nathaniel, thank you. Uh, Nathaniel Voth will now lead us in the school song, Rise Up With Pride for Washington. We encourage you to sing along. The lyrics to the song are printed in your prog program. We ask those who are able to please rise.
please be seated. What a fantastic way to begin the academic year. On behalf of the entire University of Washington community, I'd like to thank our honored guests and all of you who have made this day so special. Immediately following the ceremony, students or families are invited to Husky Stadium for the Husky kickoff, where you'll continue your connection with your fellow classmates and take the W photo, which is the single coolest thing ever. Look for the dog days leader when you exit the arena. The audience is requested to remain seated until the completion of the recession by the platform party. The 2022 new student convocation of the University of Washington is now closed. <laughs>